Hello and welcome to another Royal Reviewer Channel episode. On the 4th of November 2018, the Prince of Wales attended the Accra Ridge Church in Accra on the third day of Royal Visit Ghana. The Prince had a blessing and met the congregation at the Harvest Festival service. The Prince and the Duchess then travelled to Kumasi and visited the Manhaya Palace for a durbar and tea. Here they met the absolute monarch of the Kingdom of Ashanti, Asantehene, Otumfuo Owesi Tutu II. The Asantehene has a long-standing relationship with the British monarchy, having met the Prince of Wales in Glasgow, where they both received honorary degrees. The Duchess is presented with kente robes at a tea with the King's spouse Lady Julia. Traditionally only woven by men, kente cloth contains a lot of symbolism and the colours have various meanings. Their Royal Highnesses then attended the Durbar and cultural display. I also have particularly fond memories of being here in 1977 when I was so graciously received by Your Majesty's brother, His Late Majesty Apuku Wakare, and have long anticipated this opportunity to return. More recently, I have had the great pleasure of making your acquaintance, Your Majesty and of joining you at Glasgow University in June 2001 at a ceremony to mark the University's 550th anniversary when we were both awarded honorary doctorates. On this visit to Ghana, as we celebrate the partnership between our two countries, as well as the many special ties which bind us within our unique Commonwealth family. It was so important to my wife and to myself that we should come to Kumasi to pay our respects to Your Majesty. Highnesses were presented with gifts, including this kente cloth. Their Royal Highnesses met the King and had a chance to walk around the Durbar, meeting people in attendance. The Prince then visited the new Kumasi market and meets the Queen Mothers of the market, who represent the 10,000 people who trade there. His Royal Highness meets Ghanaian entrepreneurs, who have been supported by the Department for International Development's SME programme, enhancing growth in new enterprise. His Royal Highness had a chance to see the old market and find out about plans for regeneration. The Prince visited a cocoa farm in the area. First he was introduced to the chief of Kona, Nana Konedo, and was presented with this portrait, painted by a local artist. Accompanied by the farm owner, 
His Royal Highness takes a tour of the farm to see production and post-production of Coco. In March 2017, the Prince launched the Coco and Forests Initiative. Under the initiative, 34 international chocolate and cocoa companies committed to ending deforestation caused by cocoa growing. Ghana is currently the second largest global cocoa producer, accounting for 20% of global production. The Duchess visited the National Cultural Centre, accompanied by Lady Julia. The National Cultural Centre in Kumasi is the home of local arts and crafts making. It was founded in 1956 with the aim to collect, preserve and restore artefacts of historical importance. The Duchess also visited the University of Science and Technology Literacy and Essay Prize event where Her Royal Highness joined a number of children's reading circles. The university was named after the first Prime Minister and President of Ghana. In 1959, the President visited the Queen and a young Prince Charles and Princess Anne at Balmoral. Here we see the Duke of Edinburgh in 1959, when he opened the Queen Elizabeth II Hall. The Prince also went to the University to plant a tree and inaugurate the Prince of Wales Park. The Prince met some of the students and supporters at the park before unveiling a plaque. Isaac Dogbo tweeted, It was an honour for my father and I to welcome His Royal Highness, the Prince of Wales and the Duchess of Cornwall on their recent visit to Ghana. I have always said I was born in Ghana and made in Britain. On the 5th of November 2018, the Prince of Wales has given a speech on the Commonwealth. In the speech, His Royal Highness talked about the importance of the Commonwealth and people-to-people -people connections. He said, It is clear to me that the Commonwealth remains as vital today as it has ever been. It brings us together, building bridges between our governments and our people, and offering the practical means to work together for a better future. You will not be surprised to hear that I have been very pleased to see over these past few days the many ways in which the United Kingdom has been helping to make a difference in Ghana, whether through the private, government or NGO sectors. However, this is a two-way relationship and the influence of Ghana and of people of Ghanaian heritage in the United Kingdom is extensive and vital too, whether in the arts, fashion, music, technology, business, academia or, of course, sport. The Duchess attended a Women of the World event. She also visited the Ghana International School to launch the Commonwealth Essay Competition Prize. The Queen's Commonwealth Essay Competition is the world's oldest school's international writing competition, managed by the Royal Commonwealth Society since 1883. If you have enjoyed this video, then please give it a big old thumbs up. Don't forget to share on social media and also hit that notification bell so that you know whenever I upload a new video. So from me in Shropshire, goodbye.